start it out. All right, I'm excited to be here with Anita. Uh, do you say, do you pronounce it Reidenauer? Reidner. Reidner, okay. Fancy, it's Reidner. I just wanna make sure I got it right. So, and you're spending your time these days with the Russell School of Ministry. That is correct. Uh, full time there, running, run full, full, full speed ahead with Russell School of Ministry. Beautiful. Uh, people get confused. Honestly, I've had this happen. They think it's my school. Um, oh yeah. They, well, they, no, uh, I kind of heard you were you were doing some identity theft, really. <laughs> you, that, that was kind of the word that made it to me that you were kind of claiming it. You weren't even probably not even correcting people. Just <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> I, I don't think it's wrong to to not correct a set what something mis, someone misconstrues, right? Do you okay. remember that? So it's not as if I was overtly, you know, lying. <laughs> okay, that's not deception. All right, okay. Now I know what we're playing with here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the, the Russell School and I'm, and I uh, love it that we get to partner together. Um, and come alongside in the arena of discipleship with you and the Russell School. But it's a startup this year uh, that's really uh, kind of fun to watch because it's, it's sort of uh, on the cutting edge of being able to train and equip people to do ministry. And so beautiful two-year program, pretty intensive, um, yes, yes. and scholarship. What, what is it that you're enjoying about? I mean, you've been a part of it just here in 2020. Right. That's right. I came on board in January. Yeah. And, and so what I'm enjoying about it is just watching people become who God really wants them to be. And I've loved watching the different types of people he's bringing into, into the Russell School Ministry. In our minds, I think we had kind of one look and yeah. it would have been what was traditionally at, you know, a Christian college, but it, that has not been the look at all. And it's actually been beautiful that yeah. there's different ages, different backgrounds. So uh, I, I just love watching, no matter where people have been, uh, watching God take them to where he wants them to go. And that's exciting to me. Man, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've enjoyed seeing just the wildly diverse, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds and types of folks. Uh, you know, it's not, it's people closer to, you know, old guys like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 18, 19 year olds. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, very few are 20 and under. Yeah. Um, it's people that have left six figure jobs that, that Jesus said, come, yeah. I want you to do this. And they said, okay, I I'm coming. Um, people that have sold their businesses yeah. and, and they have no idea where, you know, they have a good idea that ministry will make them rich, uh, but they're putting their, their treasures in heaven. And so they've left it to come and, and follow Jesus in this way. So it's been really cool in their different ages and different backgrounds. And, and some, their redemption story has brought them. He's pulled them out and said, now you go. And so it's, it's a really beautiful scene when we gather for class and just gather as a community. And, and I love that part of it. Man, that's beautiful. So uh, I know too that you don't have a uh, traditional, you know, uh, history of getting into ministry. You know, it's not like you heard the call at 17 and, you know, went off. The no, back. I'm what I call non, 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 non traditional <laughs> kind of person into to ministry. And I would, and I identify with the ones who Jesus redeems me. And uh, people have asked me, what, what, what brought you into ministry? I said, I don't think I was looking for it. Yeah. I just could not help myself to, to step into whatever Jesus was calling me to. So I can't say I was ever looking. In fact, I didn't even realize I was doing ministry. I was just doing what felt right and what God was asking me to do. And they call that ministry. And so it's kind of platformed me to, to different areas. So yeah, I, I really identify. I'm very non-traditional. Did not grow up in the church. Did not have the formal um, education yeah. that most people do in ministry. Um, I grew up in Price Hill. My, my education came from Warsaw oh, Avenue. Oh. Yes, I'm one of those. And so no, I'm very non-traditional. Yeah, yeah. So what, what was it then that got you into life with Jesus, right? You didn't grow up in it. No. There was something that drew you in. Honestly, uh, for me, I grew up that I was exposed a little bit to faith, but a very legalistic background. Oh yeah. 
And, you know, my mom would, would send me off to maybe vacation Bible school in the neighborhood, or I, I wanted, went skating with my Baptist friend and, uh, uh, I found out I, I really was, I'm not going to be a good Baptist because you had to wear scooter skirts. And I, I, you know, I ran over a qu quarter and hit the ground. So I learned then I'm not Baptist because I, I could not wear a scooter skirt and roller what skate. Is a that scooter was, skirt. Yeah, that was, that was my what, experience. What is a scooter skirt? A scooter. Well, I'm clearly older than you. It's, um, well, it, I, don't wear, I don't wear skirts generally. No, well, that, well, let's hope not. That's <laughs> another issue here. Uh, so it's an above the knee skirt that's actually like shorts on it. So people might call them skorts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So going, going back to roller skating, you had to wear a skirt type thing. Uh, and, uh, okay. It, it's not dignified when you fall either, either way it goes. So I couldn't be Baptist after that. <laughs> and so I had more of a legalistic background, yeah. but really what brought me, but it was enough, you know, like I knew there was a God, I just didn't know a lot about him. Yeah. Um, but I got, you know, live life young, you know, did things yeah. all wrong backwards and when life was really hard when I was married and had kids I thought there's got to be something more mm -hmm. and I began to pursue church yeah. and and then that kind of led me to Jesus is like I was I was desperate I was desperate for hope yeah wow desperate for hope I, mean, I just resonate with how often it is uh you know it's we have these surface desires that we're often running around or distorted desires. We're running around trying to save in a lot of ways, but it's those deep ones, right? The ones that are set in from just being made in God's image, right? When you said, I just, there was, had to be something more, right? right. You know? And it was interesting because as a kid, I grew up, well, I was one of those transient kids in Price Hill. So we yeah. moved from corner to corner to corner. Yep. And uh, so part of the, a big part of that time was right there around Holy Family. Oh, yeah. 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 And I remember being 10 years old and not going to church. But for whatever reason, I was compelled to walk over to the Catholic Church. Yeah. And I watched what everyone did. And I did the whole, yeah, kneel, yeah. sit down. Um, but there was a peace that I felt in there. So yeah. It, yeah. I felt like it was kind of looking back, you know, it was destined that, that something, God was going to do something. But I hit a lot of bumps, a lot of brokenness. And, and ultimately when there was only one place to look was up, yeah. um, I began searching and he just became so real to me, but he had a lot of work to do. It wasn't, oh, he had so much work to do. Uh, and, but he's used all that. And so that's the amazing thing about Jesus, that all that mess, um, I just say he's never wasted any of my hurt or my dirt. He's been so faithful to use it all. That's good. So, yeah, and uh, so many of us have, I mean, we all have a lot of hurt and a lot of dirt, right? <laughs> right, so, right. Man, what a great way to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, how was it you backed your way into ministry, then, right? Like you just said you were just doing what seemed natural. Where was that? Right. So it, it first started out, um, I, I was working at a, a pregnancy care center, volunteering mm -hmm. there, yeah. and God just kept compelling me there and kind of founded a post-abortion ministry to help women heal from their abortion, abortion experiences. And then, then it was like, God said, Hey, there's, there's all these girls. Well, it was a conversation with my daughter and my daughter says, you know, mom, there's a lot of girls at school who aren't going to prom. And, and I said, why is that? And she goes, well, they act like they don't care. And I'm like, Oh no, they care. <laughs> and, and I said, well, you think if they had a dress, they'd go? She goes, I don't know, maybe. So that compelled me to do something called Cinderella project. I just drafted up an email yeah. sent it out and dresses started showing up on my porch honestly literally when I came home from work and so I started a ministry there that took me into the high schools to sit face to face with girls yeah. um ended up working with a lot of broken girls and we used we didn't use the dresses as a giveaway it was a get to the heart so it was a mentor program yeah uh, we stayed with them for for months and walked them through and um, got the community involved in ministering to these girls. So I, we were inside a couple of schools. And then from there, Whitewater Crossing said, hey, I heard what you do. We want you to do this here. And then when a position became available at Whitewater Crossing in yeah. student ministry, David Vaughn was like, yeah, hey, 
you need to consider this. And I'm like, uh, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> and, uh, right. and so I spent um, almost nine years as a director of student ministry at Whitewater Crossing. Yeah. And that moved me forward into this. So it's been a steady, like God's doing this and then he moves me here and he's doing this and, and yeah. none of it of which am I qualified for. So <laughs> I just keep saying yes. <laughs> I just keep saying yes. Man, that's so good. And uh, that's exactly, I you know you and I have talked uh, about what we do with Praxis. And uh, part of what we say is that, look, we, we're training everyday folks, right? To be disciple making leaders, to actually think and live like you do, right? To mm -hmm. recognize, hey, here are people with needs or here's a group of people that I'm one of, right? Or can serve in some way. And, uh, and, and so our goal is now we, we want to train and support and unleash everyday folks to do that all over the city, not just the experts, right? Right. Uh, I mean, that's been your story, right? All it takes is just Absolutely. a little And I really try to stay true to that. You know, in the world of ministry, it can be pretty polished. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 I, and what I mean by that, it's, it's just very refined and I'm not a very refined person. Um, right. I will occasionally use double negatives and, and I will butcher, you know, a word from here and there. And, right. and, and I, and that actually can be the thing that gets in my head too, of trying to be more polished. Um, but then I, I have to just really listen to who God has made me and try to back it up and go stay true to what he's used, stay true to who you are. Okay. And so um, as much as sometimes the, I think it's actually the enemy will say, well, you need to be a little more refined, a little more polished. Um, I have to battle that to say, you know, I have to stay true to who, Christ has called me to be because my voice and, and my, I think my backstory and the way I relate is for the everyday person. Um, yeah. and, and most people are not going to relate to that very polished, um, approach. And so very good that I'm not polished. <laughs> I really resonate with that. I, I think God cares way more about us being present than he does our presentation. Right. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, I just made that up. So, you know. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't even write it down. Well, it's being recorded. I'll have to go back and track this down later. Uh, that's great. Hey, I've got one last question for you. And that is, is there a passage of scripture that's either been a part of your journey, you know, that's been influential or is one that you're kind of sitting with right now, something that's, uh, that's God's been speaking to you? Yeah, there's, there's actually quite a few of those. And I, and I bounce back and forth between old and new. So in the old, I would say one of my life verses, yeah. uh, and most people don't have one comes from Leviticus 26, 13, okay. where, where um, the Lord says, I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord, your God, who's brought you out of Egypt. I broke that bar, that yoke, so that you could walk with your head held high. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's, that's a life verse that I hold on to that, but also from Jeremiah where it talks about, uh, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. So that's what I constantly like, am I really seeking you Lord yep. with my whole heart? And, and, um, lately I've actually been going through the Lord's prayer in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. It's like, Lord, am, you know, am I, am I treating you like you're holy? Yeah. You know, um, am I helping your kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven? Am I content? And so I'm working through these steps in the Lord's prayer saying, am I being true, true to this prayer in my own life? I think we just get so used to it and we can rattle it off Absolutely. without thought. So I've been, I've been like slowing that down to process it more and, and go, what does that look for me in my walk? I love and that. So, that's kind of where I've been hanging. And, and then lately with the state of the the world that we're in reading out of first Peter and, you know, as he talked to the persecuted church and what they were going through, there's so much beauty in there for us today of remembering that we've been, we've got this new birth into a living hope yeah. and it's been that resurrected King, you know? And so as dark as it gets, there's still light when we focus on that. So more of just really, um, I've got those life verses, but practices that I put in my life. You like that word praxis? <laughs> practice, practice practice yeah that's great. yeah on a person because you know I, I can be a real schlep sometimes so i just gotta make sure that i'm lining up telling other people to do it and i'm off i'm going sideways so that's kind of what i've been walking through lately is that prayer like gort god am i am i really living this out for you i love it yeah super Hey, Anita, thanks for doing this. Uh, no, please. thanks for having me. Thanks for what you do i you know i love what you do and uh, thank you for uh, 
just investing in the students at Russell School of Ministry. They, they're learning so much from you and, and practices and, and just your willingness to be available to them. I appreciate that so much. And I know they do too. Yeah. Well, thanks, Anita. You know, it, you know how it works. Like uh, you use the word invest or you uh, just spend time. You're present with people and they get something out of it, but you wind up getting things out of it. That is so true. God uses those relationships to help us continue uh, to keep the needle moving, right? And uh, so, yeah, boy, this was fun. One schlep to another, you know, <laughs> a great Yeah, I'll just keep schlepping on. <laughs> so, thank you, and thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you.